All right, when is the best time to take your architecture exams in your timeline, in your architecture journey? When is the optimal time to schedule and take your exams? That is exactly what I'm gonna dive into today, so let's do it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Design, Create, Inspire with me, Bryn Young. I realize I am green on green on green today and it's hard when your favorite color is green and so you wear a lot of green, but also you have a green room. But today I decided I don't care, I'm not gonna change. So, <laughs> hi, if this is your first time with me, I am Bryn, as I said, and I'm an architect here in San Diego. Welcome to Design, Create, Inspire, and Be Young Design. I talk all things architecture, exams, school, all that good stuff. So thank you for being here. The other day I got asked this question and it is a good one that I think a lot of people ask and are curious about. And so I figured I would come on here and chat with you about it. The person DM'd me over on Instagram, Be Young Design, so come shoot me all your questions, I love it. She asked me where were you in your career when you started testing? When I graduated my master's of architecture, I knew that I wanted to get started on my exams as soon as possible because I knew the longer that I waited, the harder it would get and I was already kind of in that, you know, study school mode and I really wanted to harness that. Also, when I graduated my master's of architecture, I had a five month old baby and so I knew that it was just going to get harder. It wasn't gonna get easier at that point, and so I needed to just do it. So I took my first exam five months after I graduated from my master's. I gave myself the summer, because I graduated in beginning of June, and I wanted to give myself at least a little bit of a breather. You know, it was like so crazy going through <laughs> architecture school, graduating, having a baby. Like I didn't have any time to breathe, and so I did give my myself the summer to just relax and breathe. And then in August, I started collecting my study material and figuring out what I needed to do. And then I really kicked off the studying in September. By the way, if you are studying for your exams right now and you're just kind of getting started or you don't know really where to start, I highly recommend downloading my free resource guide. Even if you have started the exams and you don't have this yet, definitely download it. You shouldn't study every single material. You don't need to buy every textbook. So download that and that'll give you a really good idea of what to study and for what section. So I started studying probably September-ish and I took my first exam in November and I failed that exam. And so that kind of set me up on the realities of the exams essentially. And it took me a while to get back up the courage to take my next exam, but I was really glad that I started started that routine when I did. First of all, I'm glad I took a breather. I'm glad I took a couple months break just to like decompress and be, but I am glad that I started up again quickly right after school so that I kept that momentum because it's really easy to put it off because you know, you're starting a new job or you have a baby or you know, life events happen, but I'm going to tell you life never gets less busy. Life will always be busy. So if you're super busy right now, it's going to get busier. And I understand there are certain life events, like maybe you have a wedding coming up that you're planning for, or maybe you have a big project to do, or maybe you are pregnant and you're about to have a baby. Like there obviously are certain life events that aren't as crazy. You may peak at some time, but at the same time, it's so easy, especially with these exams, because it comes with a lot of time, money, studying, energy, emotion, all that stuff that it is really easy to put it off and make excuses. It's easy to say, oh, I'm going to start studying in six months because I'll have more time there. Uh, it's easy to make up excuses of why you don't have the time now. And I knew that that was going to be the case with me. I knew that a baby is hard, but a toddler, oh my gosh, now having two kids, let me tell you what, it doesn't get easier. It literally gets harder. <laughs> Once they can start talking and moving and telling you no and everything, it's tough. And so I knew that that was just going to get more difficult. And so I knew I just needed to get to it. There was also certain things that I learned in school that were more fresh in my brain then than they are now, like even structures class or 
even, you know, certain engineering and sustainability and all that stuff. Obviously now, because I'm a licensed architect, I do my CEUs. And so you're kind of always learning. You're always learning. This is a career of perpetual learning, which is also really cool too. It's something that I really enjoy about this. But that is why I did that so quickly. And then I do want to say as well that I didn't graduate my master's without experience. So before I even started my master's in architecture, I was working as a designer, designing and building in a design build firm. Well, actually it was a construction firm and I started and ran their design build portion of it. And so I was very much in that world and already working on it. Before that, I got my undergrad degree in interior architecture and I was working for an interior designer and I had the knowledge of the process of architecture as a general of the different strategies. I was lead certified during undergrad and all that stuff. And so I had the experience when I graduated master's of architecture. Of course, you can always have more experience. There can always always be more, but I did feel really ready to start my exams. So if you're finishing school and you haven't worked at all, you haven't had any of that experience, it is helpful to go through that experience. So I always recommend people to work during their schooling. I have a whole thing on that. I'm not gonna go into that now, but I do find it really constructive to have a job while you're in school. And it also will help start building that experience and that knowledge that you will need for your exams. Now, if you're graduating and you haven't ever had a job, you've never even sat foot in an office, you haven't had that experience yet, I do recommend going and working for a little while, you know, while you're prepping for your exams. How long? That's up to you. I would say uh, get in there and every firm is different too because some firms you may never go on site. So the construction administration side of things might not be really what you're learning in field. That might be something you do have to just study more and learn for your exams. Uh, the practice management, you might not have a look inside the contract side of the business or inside really the workings of the business. You might just be doing construction drawings. So each firm is different with what experience you're going to get for the exams. So you don't wanna rely just on that, but you also don't wanna rely just on studying. It's nice to have that real world experience as well. So that's what I recommend. Get a little bit of that both, but also if you can, try not to put it off too long after graduation because it is so much harder to get back in that routine and find time for that studying when you're so used to not being in it anymore. So I wanna hear from you. When did you start your exam? exams and when did you pass or where are you in your journey? I know that there's some people who have put it off for 20 years and they're just now starting again and I think that's amazing as well. There's some people who are starting even while they're in school. So everyone's kind of on a different timeline. Everyone's a little bit different and I don't think there's really one tried and true method that's going to make you pass or fail but I do think that trying to get in there and do these exams while you're you're still kind of used to that study process is a big one because believe me once you like get to that freedom of not having to study after work you're never going to want to do it again so just get in there get it done do it and you'll be so thankful you did all right that is all I'm going to say about that I'm going to keep it nice and short and sweet if you have any questions though let me know in the comments I'm an open book happy to answer anything and if you liked this video thank you so much for watching I know you'll like this one next so definitely head on over here and I will see you next week have a good one bye